Ultra Kill is a hard game and even harder to perfect for even top players from the community. This is the first part of a four part guide which will explain how to perfect the entirety of Ultra Kill. Some of the things I talk about in this video is common knowledge to most players, but I want this guide to be as accessible as possible so anyone can use it. I have also added timestamps for your convenience. Note, I am playing on Violent, the hardest difficulty currently out. That means this guide is from the perspective of a Violent run. Also, quick note before I start explaining the levels. If you die, you do have to restart the level because you need to beat a level without dying to perfect it. Zero one into the fire. The perfect requirements for this level are time, two minutes and 30 seconds, kills, 71, and style, 7000. This is the first level in the game. It's really easy compared to most levels, so it shouldn't take too long to do this. Also, don't be ashamed for not being able to perfect a level. This game is hard and everyone has to start somewhere. First, slide through the hole in the wall and pick up your gun. Some small enemies will spawn in as soon as you pick up the gun. These guys are called filled. Filled are really easy to kill and they get destroyed by every weapon in the game. If you want to kill them quick and in bulk, you can use explosives for easy damage. In the hallway, after you beat the first swarm of filth, there will be some more filth, since it's the only enemy you've encountered till now. In the next drill, you break the glass with your piercer revolver charge shot by right clicking to get into the next room. After that, more filth, and in the next room after that, you are fighting on glass platforms. Now, be careful not to fall off, because if you do, you will have to restart. Anyways, after you beat the filth in that room, you will be introduced to a new enemy, the strays. These guys can take two shots from your revolver if you hit their torso. But if you hit their legs, arms, or head, they get one shot by any revolver. So they aren't the hardest to deal with. The next rooms are pretty standard, so it shouldn't be hard to deal with all the enemies you find, since it's just the two types you've seen till now. At the final room, you will face a malicious face. This guy is decently hard with just the revolver, but with any other weapons, it shouldn't take too long to kill. It's most effective to use the nail gun. It has two attacks, one where it shoots several projectiles in a sort of burst attack, and the one where it shoots an explosive laser. You can usually just walk around it for most of the time, but when it uses an, ex an explosive laser, you should dodge away. You do that, and if you're decent enough, you can parry for some extra damage. And it's an easy perfect reel, really. it shouldn't take too long. Zero two, the meat grinder. The perfect requirements for this level are time, two minutes, kills, 53, and style, 6,000. Since this level is very similar to Zero One, it's basically the same and you don't need to do any special tricks. So while this level plays out in the background, I will also be explaining style mechanics. Uh, go through the first room into a high hallway. Two enemies will spawn, one behind you and one ahead of you. In the next room, you will find some filth to take up fast. The next room is an arena with some easy enemies to beat. Kill them and move forward. In the next room, you are introduced to crushers. Don't get crushed by them because if you do, you die. The next room is really easy. You just have to dodge the traps and kill the enemies. The next room has you fight in a very small arena with some filth and a few strays. Then in the final room, you fight, guess what? More filth and strays. After you beat them, move on to the next level. Style 
goes up based on a number of factors. The first one is damage. The more damage you do, the more style you get. But this is probably the least effective way of getting style points fast. Then you have tricks. Doing stuff like hitting a coin or parrying your shotgun bullets into an enemy gives you bonus score, which is very beneficial since it gives a large burst of score most of the time. Then you have movement. Having good movement in auto kill is essential because if you don't dodge attacks, you die really fast. But having good movement like sliding or being midair frequently also gives you a score multiplier. All your score while midair is multiplied. This allows for more score to be gained faster. The last factor is the fresh weapon bonus. If you use a weapon which you have not used in a bit, then you get a score bonus for a few seconds. Uh, I'll link a video for movement tricks and a guide for some good combat tactics in the description, so check that out. Zero Tree, Double Down. The perfect requirements for this level are time, three minutes and 30 seconds, kills, 49, style, 7,000. This level is fairly simple, but you will face your first boss, so I will explain how to deal with it. In the first room, you will face some filthy strays. Kill them and move on. The next room has a new enemy, which is called the Schism. These guys take multiple shots from any weapon, so don't be overconfident, they can kill you. They are weak to shotguns since they deal a high amount of damage compared to other guns at close range. Coin shots are also an effective way to beat them fast. After this, you will come to a spiral staircase. Go to the lower door to fight your first boss, Sword Machine. Sword Machine isn't too tough, but it might challenge new players. The first thing you need to do to start the fight is to dodge. If you have the shotgun, projectile boosting will work well, since it will deal massive damage to the boss. If you don't, coin shots are a really good source of damage if you can hit them, which is why I suggest dodging, then hitting Sword Machine once it finishes its attack. With a bit of practice and a bit of luck, you will beat this boss. Also, once the health bar goes low enough, Swords Machine will play a defeated animation. I suggest doing some damage here, since you will have to fight him a second time, and all the damage you do at this point carries over. Once you have beaten Swords Machine, go back and up the spiral staircase to find another door. Use your shotgun to break the rock, then continue. In the next room, all the normal enemies you've fought till now will show up. First, a wave of filth and strays, and then once you've beaten them, some schisms will appear near the door. Murder them and continue. Beat up some filth and a stray and you reach the fan area. You will face one schism and four strays, which should be somewhat easy by now. Approach the door to fight some more filth and then continue. Two strays will spawn in the next room, really easy. Murder them and then you have to fight Swords Machine again. As I said, all the damage you did during the animation previously stays to this fight. Which is why I recommend doing some damage previously. Swords Machine can now only use his sword so he doesn't have any ranged source of damage. If you have decent timing you can parry his sword throw attack to do some massive damage but it will enrage Swords Machine, making him attack you much faster. Which is why I recommend trying to parry if you can when he's on low HP. Also, Swords Machine is most vulnerable after the sword throw attack since he doesn't have a weapon. So do as much damage as you can during that period. Try for a bit and you should be able to do it. 
if you're still not able to do it and you want to practice somewhere else, you can go to the sandbox. Now in the sandbox, you can activate cheats and practice dodging swords machines attack. Once you try for a bit, you should be good. After that, head out into the next level. Zero four, a one machine army. The perfect requirements for this level are time, two minutes and 20 seconds, kills, 53, styles, 8,500. This level is actually really easy since you've dealt with all the enemy types which are included in this level. In the first arena, you'll fight some strays and fills, then you'll fight a malicious face, use the nail gun or your shotgun to take it down fast and then move on. In the next room, you will fight some filth, shouldn't take long since you have a shotgun at this point, and a few strays will be in the back of the room. But other than that, you can continue. After that, you've made it to the final area of the level. Every enemy type other than the malicious face will spawn. Kill the filth with the explosives, the strays with revolvers, and the schisms with shotguns. This might take a while since there are a lot of them, but it should be easy enough to beat the level within the time limit. The only problem I could see you having is at not getting enough score. If you need some more score, like some tips on how to get score, uh, I'll have a section in the video dedicated to that at the end. 05. Cerberus. The perfect requirements are time, 2 minutes, Kills, 2, score, 3200. In this level, there are only two enemies, the two Cerberuses at the end of the level. Since there are only two enemies, the Cerberuses, I'll explain how to take them down efficiently. First, you should know that shotguns and shotgun punching are the most effective way to do damage. Coin shots are useful, but aren't really necessary in this level. Their attacks are really simple, since they only have three. Their first attack is a charge. They will stop moving to charge at you at a high speed. The easiest way to dodge this is by sliding away from the direction the Cerberus is charging. Their second attack is where they throw an explosive ball at you. To dodge this, simply dash out of the way since you get invincibility frames while dashing. Their last attack is when they stomp, which sends a shockwave across the arena. You can either dash or jump over their shockwave for an easy dodge. The last thing to mention is that first, the second Cerberus spawns on half health and only spawns once you get the first one to half health. The second thing to mention is once you kill one, the other gets enraged, which means it does more damage, and it attacks faster. So I suggest if you're having some trouble with the boss, you try and spread your damage somewhat evenly so you can kill them both very fast, successively. That's it. The video's over. If you have trouble, go into sandbox mode. It really helps to practice there. Uh, the next part of this series will be coming out sometime next week, probably. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything for you, so I'll see you next time.